morning sunshines. Let's, uh, let's give people a minute or two to grab their coffees and get here. In the meantime, tell me how you're doing. What are you up to? Still getting through your morning routine? You already deep into work? Morning, Michelle. I'm um, just enjoying my coffee for the moment. This Photoshop screen thing works. Ah, oh, because I made it smaller. That's so sad. So now it's like, do doesn't fit properly. We're learning. There we go. Hi, Crystal, how are you? changing things on the fly. Almost there. Ah, there we go. Just drinking coffee. I'm good. I'm also drinking coffee. I just made myself a nice soy milk latte. Trying desperately to figure out this whole Photoshop thing. I really thought I had this figured out before I was live, but here we are, learning. That's good. Alright. So I guess I can open my Photoshop file and start doing some stuff. Look at that. set up, I scanned all of my Photoshop pages, or not Photoshop pages, my bullet journal pages yesterday. So for whoever's here on the stream, you get to see the setup before anybody else does, because the video is going live at noon. in template in Photoshop here that shows where the dots should be. I'm actually going to uh, try to line these up first. No, 
it's gonna look real ugly for a second. <laughs> That is the very definition of close enough for rock and roll. That's pretty lined up. Okay, cool. That is the best advice I can ever give you with any digital project ever. Save all the time. Every second thing you do. Uh, okay, so um, I'm not entirely sure where to start. There is this whole image to do, which is going to be a lot, so maybe we just start with the title. So to do this, oh, I know what I forgot to do. I need to set up my color palette. So I'm going to darkest color for dark pink, which was the Dusty Rose Tombow marker. This may actually be the same marker. I feel like a little warmer though. Uh, there we go. And, uh, a dash lighter. There we go. Okay, and then for the other colors, we'll do the sage green. shadow color. Oops. This one is going to be the dark, dark olive. There we go. Actually, I like this better. So we're in between those. Okay. All right. That's kind of the color scheme. Winston Hex. That is a name and a half. Hello. Good morning. How are you? start with the title. I'm going to copy this on its own outside of the scan. I'm so glad to hear you're doing great. So we can turn these off for now so we can just focus on this. I'm going to 
we're just going to turn all of that off so we have our transparent background. I'm going to name my layer. This is um, cover title. So the idea is to basically rip all of the actual writing off of the dotted background. I don't want the paper anymore. So easiest way to do this. Well, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do this. I'm also accidentally going to get rid of my uh, drop shadow while I do it, but I can redraw a drop shadow after. coloring outside the lines. That's most of the page. So I've got most of the paper and the outside dots masked out. created a layer on top called healing. I'm going to switch to my healing brush and I'm going to start getting rid of all the dots that are on the design because unfortunately unless you have like paint all the dots show through the marker. Thing to forget. 
of the like mistakes and stuff you can see when you're this close to your work. The most zoomed in. Alright. That's not bad. So oops. Sometimes the healing brush doesn't do what I want it to do. adds to the charm. So... That's pretty good. I'm going to do... I call it a paint layer, but it's just where I do like opaque fixes on top. I'm using the stamp brush now. Oh, I'm gonna make sure it's a hard brush. And I picked up some of this lighter pink, and I'm just gonna cover some of this like the gray bit up here. There's some gray. It's probably leftover pencil lines. myself. I'm not looking at the camera at all, but I'm probably sitting here with my mouth hanging open the whole time because I'm concentrating on getting rid of all the little dots. So I'm sorry. I'm sitting here with my mouth hanging open. I don't mean to. I'm going to go over the white highlights here. Some of them are definitely kind of brush and get kind of tiny I'm just I've just got straight white paint and I'm just gonna clean up some of this it doesn't need to be perfect especially because I'm super zoomed in and like a lot of this isn't actually visible when you're zoomed out to a normal size but just to clean it up a little bit
Jeremy, how are you? Busy but good. Good. Busy's good. Sometimes. Okay, just clean up some of these edges. I may go back later and actually try to straighten out some of these letters. But for now, I think that's like sort of clean enough. And there was all the dots on it. And we just cleaned up some of the edges. I think I'll clean up this edge. So I've got my stamp again, and I'm just using it to bring that pink color up a bit to even up the pen stroke. Better. And again, I might come back and sort of perfect it even more later. I'm not sure. Oh, this R is really bugging me though. Ugh, okay. Step down here. Let's see if I can clean this up just a bit. Oh, that's better. So much better. So what I'll do is group these layers together, make sure that they're titled, cover title, and let's go grab, we'll turn that layer off, turn the scan back on. So I'm actually going to grab this whole side and this is going to be, it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be fun. So I'm going to, oops, copy from here. Paste up here, do a scan. Okay, so I feel like I need like a game plan for this. I do need a perfect border. I'm not gonna keep the pen border. I'm gonna actually draw that digitally, the black. So let's see if we can figure that out. Oh, I know. Let's turn that off for a second. That's the approximate size. Let's turn our template on. We will give the stroke a black color. Get it actually black. Good. Make sure it's on the inside. And turn down the opacity so I can see the dots underneath for a sec. So, Instead of lining it up with the scan, which might be like a little bit askew, I'm actually going to line this up with the sort of perfect, perfected digital template. I'm going to make sure it's just outside those dot lines. Oops. So on this edge, we're going to bring it down just a little bit. And now I'm just going to make the stroke big enough, so it's at 40. Oh, why doesn't it want to... Why is it such 
to odd number 64. Sure. 65. Okay. And if I turn the scan off. Oh, I want it to be just over those lots. So. Sorry, Mish, I don't know when you said that, but have fun at your meeting. <laughs>
from the feather I'm worried that if I just do like a straight selection here it'll take out all of the light green color at the bottom it's leaving some of it and any that it does take out I can kind of repaint later a little bit oh that's not so bad that's okay I know this probably all looks a little bit garbage right now just because the, the process is Art in progress always looks a little bit garbage. I think the funniest part is sometimes when I'm doing this, I keep trying to like erase dots that I see on the screen, except that they're not in the scan. They are on my monitor. I'm just trying to clean dirt off my monitor with Photoshop. It doesn't work. So if you see me click in areas that are actually invisible, it probably uh, means I should clean my monitor. Okay, let's clean up some of this. I am amazing at coloring outside the lines. those dots there. I might use them to line up some lines later. I 
enjoy this process. It's one of the most tedious parts of any of the work that I do, but um, I find it like satisfying. switch to my healing brush and start getting rid of all the little dots that are hidden inside the artwork. This is the only downside to... Uh, oh, I'm going to turn off that border. Okay. Otherwise the healing brush wants to select from all layers and add black into it. I don't want that. Yeah, this is the issue with doing any art in a bullet journal if you ever want to do anything else with it. It's got all the dots in it. I should create a levels layer and actually make sure that the black is black because often it scans a little bit gray and I can do that after. Well, at least the leaves cover the dots a little bit more because I layered on so much marker. Black. This is where I drew the lines first in black pen and then decided afterwards that I was going to use the acrylograph pen to do the shadows. So I went over it, but some of the pen's still sticking out. And it's clearly just something on my skin.
So, I think I am going to try to add a levels layer, but I don't want to affect the rest of the colors. <clears throat> I like the way the scanner kept all the pinks really light. It almost looks nicer than it does in real life, which is rare. Sometimes the scanner picks things up weirdly. So, I'm actually going to do select color range, and I'm going to select only the gray. Bring this down to like 100. Enough, maybe. Hopefully that should select most of the pen. And then I'm going to add a levels layer while it's selected. So it's going to be masked out and only affecting the part that was selected. And then bring up the blacks. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it's just enough that, for example, when I add the black border back in, put it at full opacity, the black pen should actually blend in with it now, as opposed to looking gray next to it. So, a bit better. And now if I want to correct any lines, I can paint with straight black. Uh, I'm going to turn the levels back off for now, add a paint layer. I'm going to work with actual black, just fix up a few things. I guess the pink can be on top of the levels because it is black. Like here, I accidentally covered my pen with the acrylic graph, so I'm just going to add that line back in. So you're all seeing this design now, but this, this video isn't actually live yet. The bullet journal setup. It is going up at noon today. So if we're still hanging out, feel free to drop off and go watch it. I may tap out at noon though, if you enjoy lunch. We'll see how much of this I actually get done.
Oh, hey, Jenny. Uh, Four-year-old at virtual school and just trying, oh, okay. No, no worries. So I'm cleaning up my printable for June. So I'll zoom out real quick so you can see. So this is definitely, I was just saying too, this is the sneak peek of the actual setup for June because the video goes live at noon today. So you're seeing it now. Super special. Um, but yeah, I'm just cleaning up um, all the dots and everything off the grid. So like, this is my healing layer to remove all the dots. Uh, this is the mask layer to take out all of the paper texture. And right now I am just, I guess like cleaning up edges and stuff. So I've got my paint layer going on. I'm using a stamp tool to pick up the texture from other places that are clean and then like cleaning up little edges and mistakes and that's a lot. <coughs> yeah, it's not nothing. Oops. It definitely takes some time. It usually takes me at least a solid day to make a printable, and sometimes two days, especially if I'm making two versions, one for Patreon and one for Etsy. So much effort. I thought you just scanned. Now I know why it's so extra. Oh yeah. So there's there's like no, I don't just scan it. I do scan it, but this is like cleaning up the scan part. And so the other thing I've done too is the original scan. If I take back the mask, <clears throat> had my hand drawn black border on it. So I basically took that all out, added a digital black border. So it'll be <clears throat> oh my gosh, I need coffee. Uh, it'll actually be like perfect. And this is the Photoshop part, but after this I'll take it to um, InDesign and actually set up the layouts, more so for like the calendar pages and stuff.
<laughs> my back is already starting to hurt. This is like when I when I get super into <laughs> making these printables and I sit here all day and do all these little detail things. Uh, I definitely like hunch over like my friend would. I end up with a very, very sore back. It's not the best. I need some yoga. Oh, this green here is really bugging me. I clearly went over the lines. <clears throat> So, another thing I need to do is, <clears throat> because I plopped the digital border right on top of everything, I need to lower the opacity so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to add a mask to it, and I need to mask out the parts that are supposed to go over the border. and turn the opacity back up. There, we actually have our border with the flowers going on top of it, like it was in the original design. But now it's actually straight and not my wobbly pen lines.
can see so many dots that I missed. too bad. I haven't saved this whole time. That was the number one thing I said at the beginning was save as often as possible and I'm not following my own advice. straighten up these gate lines. Hmm. They're actually not too bad. I've definitely been known to draw less straight lines in my life. It's these hand-drawn ones that are... I mean, that's... Honestly, it's, it's not awful. Could be worse. So, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm just going to call it gate. <clears throat> I'm going to pick a brush size that's around the same as my pen width. What is that at? Three. I think my pen's look more like a four pixel. Yeah, that looks about right. So. I'm going to draw one line. I'm actually going to draw. Okay, I can't see that. Where's my pen? There it is. So I'm actually gonna draw just one full straight line. I'm holding shift so that it's perfectly straight all the way down. I'm going to reduce the opacity of this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to Duplicate this. Oh, you know what? I'm going to turn on the template dots so I have the perfect ones and actually line this up properly with the dots. And then we can erase all my wobbly lines underneath. <clears throat> Just blend those all together, duplicate that, bring the whole thing over here. of this back up. I'm going to put a mask on gate. I'm going to mask out the center part because we don't want it going over the swirls. And I need to take out all the wobbly lines. Oops. Okay. 
gonna hide gate for now. I'm just gonna take out all of the hand-drawn stuff. center one for now. That one was at least drawn on the ruler, so it's a little straighter on its own. That's my interference. I'm going to actually make a rectangular selection so I can get a straight line. Punch it up just one. So, oops. This is helping in two ways. It's helping me not erase any of the gate that I don't want to while I get rid of the rest of these lines. Because I can only erase within that rectangular area. But also, at the same time, I can erase nice and close to it and kind of straighten out that thicker horizontal bar as well. Just a bit. It already wasn't awful, but... And now I can just kind of get rid of all of this. Goodbye, wobbly lines. Farewell. sure it doesn't go over my leaves or anywhere it's not supposed to be.
dead. Ugh. Okay. I go along this edge to clean up. select all these layers and right click and export as. I'll export them as JPEGs and bring them into InDesign. And then set up the layout there. There's so much depth in that image with the layering of roses and gate. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I, yeah, I, I enjoy drawing it. I kind of look at it the same as like when you're setting up a, a photo shoot, any sort of photo, like you want, kind of want to have that depth of field, you want to shoot through something, like through some foliage or something to give the photo extra layers. So I was kind of trying to do that, but with drawing. Of course, in a photograph, you'd have things actually out of focus. I can't really draw that way, but <laughs> at least it, it seems to have worked if that's how you see it, so it's good. Uh, so yeah, there's the cover, there's the title that we cleaned up. Oh, thank you. Um, the title, I just remembered, when I clean up all the paper out of the title, so if I turn off the mask, when I clean up all of that paper from the scan, I took out the drop shadow. So I actually am going to add that drop shadow back in, and I think I'm just going to add it basically by hand. Uh, I'm going to... Turn my color palette back on. I'm gonna select the gray color, which is the same, I've selected all of this out of the original scan, so it should be basically the same as my Tombow colors. So this would be like the N95 Tombow color. And the brush, something big. I'm going to add some smoothing to the brush so that when I draw it, like, it smooths it out. Yeah, I don't know. Because I'm doing this with a trackpad. I actually don't have a, uh, a tablet. Well, I do have a tablet. I just often don't switch to it for stuff like this. I actually kind of do a lot of this with my trackpad. <laughs> don't ask me why. I don't know. Would eventually like to get sort of a nicer tablet. I would love one of the tablets that has a screen like a Cintiq but they cost they cost a lot of money. Thank you. 
I'm sure this looks really weird right now just because <laughs> it's like showing on the wrong layer, but I promise it'll look okay <laughs> when I move it <clears throat> under the other layer. <clears throat> Got some drop shadows back in there. It just adds another little sort of detail, I guess. So, save. Drink coffee. Very important. Uh, what I can do now. Wait for a second. I can launch InDesign. I can actually show you how I would put it into InDesign. select both of these. 
export as JPEGs. actually show you that I'm exporting anything. Okay, that's fine. I guess because I only shared the one window. Um, but I will save these. So inside every monthly setup, I have the whole folder for the video and everything. And then inside that folder, I also have a folder for the printable. Inside that, I have a folder for all of the assets that I export from Photoshop. And then, I have a... design template that I created for the principles specifically. So let's switch over to InDesign and see if this works. Is it going to work? Or does it not believe that I have InDesign open? That's sad. Let's see if I can fix it. If I just switch it to Photoshop and then switch it to InDesign. Hey, it believes I have it open now. There we go. Just fixing things on the fly. <laughs> okay. Turn off the grid because that's really noisy. Um, so this just has a bunch of basic layouts already in it, which are like typical layouts I will use in my bullet journal, like a regular old calendar. I don't actually have a, a base layout of the one that's all separated, uh, separated boxes like I have this month. Oh, InDesign's freaking out at me. Oh no. I should probably close Photoshop so I don't have both open. This is my bad. Yes, save the document. Close Photoshop. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do... I'm actually just going to wipe this out because I know I'm not using that layout at all. That's better. So I'm going to place in the two... Oops, my hair is in my face. Oh, don't worry. Okay. Place in the assets that I exported. So, so cover and cover title. Streaming at the same time. I'm sorry if you ever asked me to do so much for me. Hopefully, it doesn't just crash with the extras in it. Everyone else doing? <laughs> My coffee is cold. How's yours? Oh no, I'm 
I'm so afraid it's just gonna crash. Journaling, nice. Journaling, like thoughts journaling or like bullet journaling? Also cold coffee, so sad. I just drink my coffee so slow, it gets cold. Oh my word. Please stop. Oh no. I guess I'll force quit in design. <laughs> Thought sternly, reflecting on a book. Oh, nice. That's awesome. All right, let's just uh, let's just do this for now, and uh, I'll see if I can figure out in design. All right, we have an InDesign. Find InDesign is the hardest. Adobe program to run. Like, you would think Photoshop is really big, or Premiere, or After Effects, because it can do so much, but no. The one that's just for paper things, for books and stuff, that's the one that just eats my computer alive. So Jenny, which book did you read? struggling just to reopen. Why? Maybe I can't show you in design. That's annoying. I mean, I can just go back to photoshopping stuff, but I thought it would have been cool to show you how I add things in. that this computer does not want to run into mine, so we're just gonna open Photoshop back up. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> I should have all the photoshopping done. I think it's kind of a, a range of some lo-fi and some classical and just chill music. I like to work to mostly things that have no words or at least words that are, I don't know, not like screaming at me, just so I can focus a bit more. Because I like really loud and fast poppy music or like rock music normally, but when I'm working I like something quieter so I can focus. And just be chill. Yeah, Photoshop really doesn't want to load either. Wow. <laughs> and this might be the death of my stream. Just, that's it. The computer doesn't want to do it anymore. It is almost noon. Thank you. 
Oh my gosh, I think I figured out why my computer's freaking out. It was running a backup at the same time. No wonder. You're trying to do too many things at once. Self-care is important, computer. Stop. Stop burning out. Why would you do that? Look at that, we're back! As soon as I turn off the backup. Amazing! Oh my gosh, okay. Well, now I know for next time. I was nervous about streaming computer-based things today because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, maybe this will work, maybe it won't. But it's okay, we're learning. Okay, well, now maybe it will open InDesign? Do we risk it? I'm gonna try. I believe in it. It's an adventure. Meantime, so this is the calendar spread. So, what I'll do is select the piece that has all of the actual design part of it. I don't need any of the boxes or anything like that because all of that gets drawn digitally in InDesign. Just need these bits. <clears throat> Drag that up to the assets folder. Grab that. Call this uh, calendar. Now, stuff like this is kind of harder to edit sometimes because what I've got to do is actually completely mask out sale calendar boxes like so but then when I bring it into InDesign I need to make sure that perfectly lines up with the actual boxes I've drawn in InDesign which doesn't always work um, sometimes it needs some finagling because the scans and my hand-drawn lines are never going to be exactly you know digitally perfect so sometimes it's a trial and error kind of thing, but I'm going to do this. <clears throat> probably have a bunch of dots. If I turn the white background back on, yeah, you can see a bunch of these little garbagey bits over here. And then the other fun thing about drawing designs that go across the center of the spread is that you have this beautiful messed up page fold in the scan and then you've got to try to piece back together your drawing. So that's super fun as well.
Clown Gremlin, hello. Thank you so much for the follow. How are you? Also, Clown Gremlin sounds freaky and adorable at the same time. I'm good, thank you for asking. I like your hair, it looks odd. Thank you so much. I would say I also like my hair. I mean, I did, <laughs> I did choose it. I mean, why not both? <laughs> Says the girl with two colored hair, because I'm a Libra and I can't make decisions. <laughs> I also really love black hair, though. I've had half black before, and it, it's pretty awesome. It's just that if I go black, then it stains my hair, and then I can't have colors anymore. And because I know I'll change my mind again really quickly, I don't want to do that. I like to change my hair relatively often. That being said, I feel like I've had these colors or variations of these colors for like maybe a year now. That's a pretty long time. My hairstylist just keeps slightly changing them. Like, oh, it's slightly darker now. It's slightly more green now because uh, she knows I like change. I'm gonna try black fading into cyan. Ugh, please do. That sounds awesome. I love that idea. So this is the fun part of trying to fix this paper fold. Ugh. I'll try it yeah, now, I'll try to fix it now. So I'm going to use my stamp tool and grab from a place that's not all out of focus. It does sound gorgeous. It's such a good idea. Oh, you know what I should be doing? I should. I should do my healing layer first and get rid of the dots. I'll just do the dots in the title, not the whole page, so we're not wasting a ton of time. But, uh, just use my healing brush tool and get rid of these. Excited to see how it turns out. Well, me too. I'm also excited to see how it turns out. Please show me when you get it done. Because <laughs> it sounds awesome. and get my hair redone soon actually. I'm really happy with how it's, I would say how it's faded. It's barely faded, that's why I'm really happy. Normally it fades much more than this, um, but my roots are growing out really long already. I think partly because it's summer, my hair is growing a bit faster. Or summer, is it still spring? I don't understand seasons. Okay. Most of the dots gone. Neither do I. Um, okay, and now I'm going to make the paint layer. And now I'll grab my stamp brush and grab from an area that's clean. And now basically kind of redraw in the pieces that are all blurry and missing. I need a little light here, I think. Autocrats not even fair. 
Isn't it always though? Autocorrect just never quite does what you want it to do. It tries its best. Honestly, it's, it's, it's trying. We appreciate the effort. That's looking a little better. I can grab the darker pink and draw in this bit. Oops. Better. I'm just going to take a regular brush and turn the paper back on. here and just clean up this edge a little bit. Also, I can get rid of these dots. Okay. I'm making it a little bit thinner than to be because I'm going to paint over it with black. There we go. So then back to my paint layer. Regular black brush. I'll make it around four pixels. Just kidding. That's three. I'll make it four because four pixels is about the width of my pen. How do I know this? Because I've just done this a lot of times. <laughs> Not my first rodeo, not my first printable. I will draw that line back in. My motivation has hit a roadblock recently. Do you have any advice on getting motivated again? I mean, sometimes motivation comes from just doing the thing. Sometimes you kind of have to just start doing the thing, and then, like, as you start, the motivation hits more. It's not necessarily always how it works, but I find that helps me. Like if you're trying to um, write something, then just tell yourself like, you know what, I'm just gonna open Word or whatever writing app you use. I'm just gonna open it, I'm gonna create the file, choose my font, and just like, that's all I need to do. And you take all the pressure off yourself. And then by the time you get the document open, then sometimes that's just enough to kickstart you into like, oh, okay, well, I'm already here, the document's open, I guess I might as well do something. That's how I trick myself into working. I don't know if that was helpful or not. <laughs> So much better. All right. So just just for reference here, that's that's what the scan originally looked like. That's looking way better. Oops. Yeah. Scan fixed. Oh, I'm glad it was helpful. You're welcome. Hello. I guess the other thing you can do is sort of hold yourself, or get someone to hold you accountable for things. So actually, fun fact, I've been slightly more productive since I started streaming my work uh, because I'm kind of held accountable to you. Like, I can't just sit here and, you know, get lost in the internet or check my messages because uh, y'all are watching me work, so I, I need to work. It's actually been incredibly helpful, so thanks, everybody. <laughs>
video time. The actual video for this setup is going live at noon. Sometimes I feel like I spend a little bit too much time on this, like the fact that I'm this zoomed in, maybe this doesn't matter at all to anybody, but it matters to me that it is kind of like as perfect as I can get it, just because, I mean, I'm giving it to my patrons uh, who are supporting me, which I super appreciate, and then um, the rest of the principles go to Etsy, so it's people literally buying them, so I just want to make sure it's basically as good as it possibly can be, right? I, I want to... I want to give people nice things. So I maybe spend slightly too much time on this, but um, also it's fun for me. I enjoy photoshopping, so it's not so bad. And now I can do it while I'm hanging out with you guys, so it's even better. try and show some of the InDesign process tomorrow maybe, or maybe just for another printable entirely. I do want to show that too, because I think it's kind of neat, but clearly InDesign doesn't want to play nice today. I don't know that InDesign ever wants to play nice. I think I fight with it more than any other Adobe program. select. I'm going to select the grayish, like dark gray color that is my pen. I'm actually going to bring it up to 150 tolerance, I think. So that should select all the black pen and it should have selected it everywhere. Yep. And now with that selected, create the levels layer and bring up the blacks. 
so that I'm not affecting the pink colors at all or any of the green. I'm only affecting the black and making it darker so that my pen color is actually black. Oh, wow. <clears throat> now my trackpad is running out of battery. The technical difficulties today are wild. That's okay. Um, so... I think I'm gonna wrap things up for today because my video is going live in like three minutes, so go check that out. Um, but thanks to everyone who came out to chill with me while I worked on my principal today. I hope that you love seeing some of the behind the scenes process. I can definitely show more of this if you're interested in it. Um, tomorrow I might show a little bit more of this process or maybe sketching for a special bullet journal layout. We shall see, that might be next week, but. Um, yeah, be sure to tune in, find out, and until then, thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you next time.